Well, good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Interrupted everybody's chatting and having some good time here. Well, for those of you that are here, welcome. We're glad to have you joining us this morning. Those of you that are online, welcome. We're glad to have you as well. Uh, just some announcements for this morning. Um, this morning, we will be having videos for our, our music this morning. So uh, we're going back to our old format. So we'll have a uh, message and, and communion and everything. And then we will put a link for those of you online to the playlist so you can uh, sing along with those four songs that we'll be doing after the after communion and after the prayers to the people. So we invite you to uh, join us for that. Um, Pastor Bruce and Shannon, they are down in Florida getting some much needed time, which I know Pastor Mark and Lori are going to be needing here pretty quick, and they're going to be able to get some of that in uh, while Mark's working out in Florida. So we're looking forward to that, having you guys have some much needed time together as well. Uh, join us this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock right here. Um, we will be having a time of worship and prayer. Uh, right now we're taking a break from uh, any studies. We're just coming together and we're, we're worshiping through music, a devotional, and then certainly the prayer time, which is a huge part of our Wednesday nights. Sometimes those prayers, which have now crept into four printed pages, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. The, the bigger, we don't care how big that list gets because that allows us to uh, pray in uh, concert with other Christians and, and pray for the pe people that need God's prayers. Um, coming up in July, well, in June, June 12th, we have Orange Track. And then on July 10th, we have Orange Track again, but the evening of July 10th, it's gonna be a little bit of a marathon day, but uh, we wanna keep that movie going every other month. So July 10th, we're gonna have our next movie as well. So we're looking forward to that coming up. Um, I don't believe there's any other announcements. Unless Mark, did you have anything? Or are you just checking your calendar? I was actually doing a check-in. Wow. He's, yeah. he's getting on his phone, going to Facebook, and going to check in, let everybody know he's here. Yep. <laughs> if you got your smartphone, go ahead and you can grab it, go on Facebook, just say, hey, I'm at, I'm at Grace Street. Let everybody know where you're at this morning so that uh, we can let people know about this great uh, ministry that we have here. Our call to worship this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3. This is what the prophet wrote. He says, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you, says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Now, as I, as I ran over this this weekend, as I, I just spent some time with this passage that Mark picked out for our call to worship, I was struck when it says, He knows our name. Now, if you're like me, you have a hard time remembering what you had the other day to eat for supper. God not only knows your name, but He, he knows every hair on your head. And then you think from creation to now, the billions and billions and he knows each one of us intimately. He knows every bit about us. And it, it really reminds me as I, as I continue through this and, and think about being called by name and, and that we are his. It reminds me of the, the good shepherd and his sheep. Now that comes from John 10, 3, where Jesus says the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He calls us by name because he knows us. And this really echoes Jeremiah 30, 22, where it says, You will be my people and I will be your God. Here's the thing. God will bring us through the difficulties of life. And as I read the latter part of this, I'm thinking deep waters, 
Red Sea. What did he do? Moses lifted up his staff and God parted the Red Sea. And then when they went into the Promised Land, what happened? Again, the waters are parted. And so we will not drown. And I was, with my dad was, and, and was over yesterday, and we were talking about just reminiscing about things. When I was 18 months old, we were at a, a, a resort, uh, well, it was an Indian reservation out west in Oregon where there was a pool. And I can remember, I, I even told him to set up, and he was just, I think he was a little shocked, but I still remember this because, you know, I'm not even close to 18 months. I got out of this little round baby pool and I toddled around the end of the pool and I ended up in six foot. And I remember bubbles and the sun. And then everything went dark and the next thing I remember are two hands setting me up on the deck and I just went right back to the baby pool, didn't think anything of it. But that's my earthly father taking me out of deep water. For what, you know, when you're this tall, that six foot's pretty neat. <laughs> now, for now I can stand above and go like this and I'm fine. But the deep waters, and then the flames will not consume us. So, I don't know about you, but the first thing I think of is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego dancing in that furnace with a fourth person, Jesus. They were dancing in there. They were not consumed by the flames. And then, and then, Isaiah finishes it off, he says, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, and Lord Savior. And, and Mark is about to bring us a message that we are chosen. We are chosen. He wants us. Not just those of us who lay claim and, and declared our, uh, our faith, but he wants the people that are walking outside, that are walking by, and driving down the road, that have no idea who he is. He wants them. He chose them. He wants them. He wants us to go out and share his message with them. Mark, you want to come up here before the message here? What some of you don't know is Mark's going to be leaving as soon as this service is over today. And he's going to be going for work for two weeks. And he's driving all the way down to Florida. So not only has he prepared this message for us today, but he's also been planning to go on a trip where he knows that he is chosen. Where he knows that no matter what he runs into, God is there. So, Father God, as we prepare to hear the message that you have given to Mark this morning, we ask that you not only lift him up and get him where he's going safely and bring him back to home safely over the next couple of weeks, but, Father, we pray for the message that you have given to Mark this morning. We ask that it is a message that lifts us up, that, that creates a, us a heart to want to go out and to share the message that you have given us through Pastor Mark. Father, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to learn and our minds so that we can take this message, this message about the fact that you have chosen us and use it in the world today. In Jesus' name.
and uh, worked at the radio station. Uh, for those of you who remember, uh, we had the 103 uh, radio station, which was a Christian radio station here. Tim Calcara uh, passed away yesterday, and Harry Edison III passed away yesterday. So uh, it's, it's amazing to see God at work in all these things because of the fact that, uh, you know, we have this assurance from God. That we are chosen by Him. He's called us by name. He's put His directions, He's put His love and His stamp on our hearts. And even though we, we go through the difficulties in life, He is there with us each and every step of the way. And we just need to be able to understand that we just need to lean on Him and lean on uh, the gifts that He gives us and the preparation that He puts on our hearts. So, as I'm giving this message today, um, I'm a little bit emotional, a little bit shook. So, I, it's, it's been kind of, a, kind of a tough day so far. But I want you to think back. Uh, and for some of us, it's, it's going to be like a trip in the way back machine. So, that's going to date me because that, that, you know, is from the 60s. And, and I was a child of the, of the 60s and 50s. And so... Uh, but I kind of want you to think back a little bit. For some of us, it might have happened just like last week. Other times, it's, it's you know, we're standing on the playground or, or we're on a team and it's kind of a pickup game of whatever it is, basketball or football, and we're all standing in line and you have the captains out here that were chosen and they have to choose each person to be on the team. So what happens if you weren't chose first? You know, you're going, oh, I'm better than he is. Why not? Why not? Why wasn't I chosen first? But then if you were chosen first, you have all the rest of the people standing over there that haven't been chosen yet going, now why did he get chosen and I didn't? So all the questioning begins and everything and that we kind of go through all those unrequired justifications on why we were or weren't chosen at that point in time. And if you you know, if you go through those motions and you go through those kind of things and you think about it, it, it makes you question who you are and, you know, are you good enough? Are you good enough? But see, the, the thing about it is if we get judged by our peers, no matter what happens to be, and chosen by our peers or not chosen by our peers, it could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. But, you know, usually it's difficult at best because you know that you're either being judged or you were judged. And so, but you were either chosen or not chosen. And so we have to kind of think about that. We have to kind of wrestle with those things once in a while. So for some of us, it was a long, long time ago. For other of us, eh, it could have been last week. So, but see, the neat thing is, God chose us and it's completely different. You don't have to stand and be judged by your peers, whether you're good enough or not, to be on his team. God knows you. He created you. He formed you. And so he chose you because of who you are and who he created you to be. See, we're all unique. And so if we judge ourselves against somebody else, well, God created them to be them. He created us to be us. And so we can't compare ourselves to the other people because God didn't create us to be them and he didn't create them to be us. So Ephesians 1, 3 through 11 says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heaven because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. So there's no judgment there. He created us to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing himself through Jesus Christ to us to have that relationship. And this is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. 
So we praise God for the glorious grace that he's poured out on us to belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered us with kindness and along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which was to fulfill his own good plan. So he doesn't leave us there to leave us guessing. He says, and this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth will be joined together. And furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. So see, we don't have to worry about what's going to happen next. We don't have to worry about being chosen. He already has us chosen. He already has our future planned out for us. We just have to go along for the ride. Believe in him and live according to his will. Now, all of us have free will, so we have a choice of whether we do that and follow Christ or we want to follow ourselves. Now, our humanist kind of makes us want to follow ourselves a lot of times. And nine times out of ten, that kind of gets us going in the wrong direction and gets us into trouble. So, some people might hear that whole section in here and say, hey, we've got it made, right? We will never in as much stumble or fall because God chose us. And he has his plan for us. And we have all of these blessings, and he chose us above all others because we believe in Jesus, right? So after all, he made the universe, and he made us, and we're made in his image, and, you know, God is perfect. So therefore, if we're on God's team, and he's a loving and caring God, then he wouldn't let anything bad happen to us at all, or anything come our way that was bad, right? So we got made as long as we believe. Uh, not quite. But see, that's the logic that a lot of Christians use when they can't cope with the difficulties that they face in life. Our life is a journey. And through this journey, we face difficulties and we face trials. But all the time people say, why do bad things happen? happen to good people. Now, how many in this room have said that? Why is this happening to me? Some people it's daily, right? So if God is a loving, caring God, how come he let this happen? That's question number two that usually follows up the first one. But see, we need to look at what it said in that verse. See, what's written in God's word is, not anything to do with those questions that we end up asking. The scriptures actually tell us a completely different story. So as many of you heard, when I was called to the Lord, it was at a concert, and we were out in Marion Square Park, and it was the first concert that they'd had there in over 20 years. And I was there from KRNA, who I was with radio station at the time. And... Uh, so I announced the band and everything, and I kind of went out into the audience, and I, I wanted to see what this Christian concert was all about. And so, as I'm standing there going through the concert, this guy comes up and hands me a Bible and says, God's got a message for you, and he wants you to read it. And he hands me this Bible. Then he turns around and walks away. And I'm going, I don't hope so. I open up the Bible, and the first thing that pops out on the page was our call to worship from today. And it says, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. Listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. 
When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. And when you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. See, and it's these promises from God that Christians point to and say, Hey, I told you so. I told you so. We're not supposed to go through problems. But let's take a look at what's going on here. See, Isaiah chapter 42 ends with God. And, and Pastor Terry and I talk about this all the time. Don't just read that one scripture. Go to the one before it and go to the one after it. And there's a reason for it. Because Isaiah 42 ends with God's sorrow over the spiritual decay of his people. They've fallen away from him. So 43 was a reminder to these people of Israel, hey, hey, I've chosen you. You're my people. Don't fall away from me. Don't stray. Don't go by your own understanding. Rely on me. I'm here for you. And so he gives them these words of assurance. He, he says, despite the people's spiritual failure on their part, that they're falling away from God, he's still there for them. He's going to show them mercy. He's going to bring them back from captivity. And he's going to restore them. He would give them that outpouring of love and not wrath. Then the world would know that God alone had done this. That God alone had done this. God created the people of Israel and they were special to him. God redeemed them and called them to be by name to be those who belong to him. God protected Israel in times of trouble. And we are important today as the people of Israel were then. If we claim to believe God and, and belong to God and bear his wonderful name as being Christians, we must never do anything that would bring him shame or cause him to grieve like the people of Israel were doing. But see, he didn't turn against them. He didn't destroy the people. Instead, he sent them words of love and of grace and of mercy. That, hey, I know who you are. I created you and I have called you by name. Because we as Christians, God knows this, we as Christians, are not perfect and we do cause shame because of our sins each and every one of us has a sinful nature and we sin and we show shame on God when we sin if we look further into the passage, passage it says when you go through deep waters I will be with you and when you go through the rivers of difficulty you will not drown so notice here, it doesn't say, I'll keep you from going through deep waters, troubled times. See, we're surely going to face those troubled times in our life's journey. But it says, he'll go through them with us. With us. We need to understand that this going through the rivers of difficulty will either cause you to drown or force you to grow stronger. See, those, those difficulties that we face in life, they're there to help build our character. But moreover, they're there to build our relationship with God. As we go through the difficulties, He wants us to lean on Him, to come to Him for our strength, to come for, to Him for our understanding, to help bring us through that difficulty, not go through it on our own. Not go through it on our own. So if you go on on your own strength, you're more than likely going to drown. But if you invite the Lord to go with you, it says in his word, he promises that he will protect you. And it's the same thing when we come to those fires of oppression. When you walk through that fire of oppression, 
you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. It doesn't say that you're going to stay in the fire and be burned. It says when you pass through the fires. When you pass through the fires. And a couple of months ago, I was talking about the 23rd Psalm. And again, I was talking about God's relentless passion for his people. And it says in the 23rd Psalm, Yea, do I walk through the valley of of death, I shall fear no evil, for you, thou art with me. It doesn't say, I'm going to leave you there in that valley of the shadow of death, in the darkness by yourself. It says, no, 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 I am with you, for lo, I am with you. He is with us always. He gives us these words of assurance continually throughout our lives. So that we don't have to struggle, we don't have to worry, we don't have to involve our lives and struggle through life. He wants us to live a fulfilled life. But we need to trust in Him. We need to give Him the assurance that, yeah, we're sinners. We're not perfect. He knows that He created us. But what He says is, lean on me. We, we sang that song, Lean on me, here a week ago. And, and it was cool because normally you don't hear the song, Lean on me, in a church. And I loved it. Because that's exactly what we're talking about here. And that kind of gave me the impetus for this section of, of my sermon for today. So if we remain faithful to God, He will help us overcome those difficulties in life. When we look at the movie that, uh, this is based on the movie that we saw, Overcomer. And when we look at that, Hannah, the little girl, was facing a lot of difficulties in her life. And she was stumbling along, existing the only way she knew how, day to day. And she was relying on her own understanding. She was trapped in sin. And she was separated from God. She, she'd become a kleptomaniac and she was stealing things from people. as she'd go through because she was lost. She felt alone and abandoned. But see, God didn't leave her in those difficulties. Yeah, she was a sinner. She was stealing. She was lying to people. But instead, he put people in her path to help her get back on track. Specifically, cross, cross country. Okay, okay. It's a bad joke for, for those of you who've seen the movie. But you get what I mean here. He put her back on track. And he put people in her path. And he does the same for us each and every day. We have to take time to understand that and to realize that and look at the bigger picture. We're here to lift each other up and edify each other, to help ourselves through these difficulties. He puts us here to help each other out. That's what we do. We serve God and it pleases Him when we do those things. See, He called her back to Him using people of faith to intercede on her behalf. He brought her back to her earthly father. He brought her back into her life in an effort to help restore her both to her father and to bring her into a relationship with himself, her heavenly father. And in the process, she repented of her sins. She made restitution to those who she had wronged. She took back and handed them back to the people that she had stolen them from with a note to say how sorry she was. She truly repented of her former life. And she left that former person behind. She died to herself to become a new life in Christ. God brought her back into a relationship with him. Now she helps others find their way into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. See, you need to understand this in life, you're going to face trials. It's how you choose to deal with them that will make the difference. How you choose to deal with them. So now I need to stop here and say that Friday, Friday night, I had my sermon all printed out, all ready to put into my notebook for today. Whoops, sorry about that. And my lovely and wonderful wife, and even at that point in time, said, are you sure that it's ready to go? Because these little pages,
page holders in here are not easy to get paper in and out of, I can tell you. She usually does that for me because I got these big clumsy hands and it's not a real fun job. So she says, are you sure you're done tweaking it? Because I never usually really am. I said, sure, sure, it's good to go. It's good to go. Well, Saturday morning, God said, oh, no, 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 wait a minute here. You only told part of the story. You need to get the rest of the story down here. So, mini sermon in the midst of the sermon. So here we go. <laughs> the coach in the movie thought he had it all figured out. He was going to win that state basketball championship. He had all the players in place. He had all the things ready to go. And then he had his future set. He had all those pieces in place, and he could taste the victory that he was going to have. And it became the focus of his life, personally and professionally. At home, he talked about basketball. At basketball, he talked about basketball. At school, he talked about basketball. At church, he talked about basketball and how he was going to win that championship this next year. It was going to be their year, and he knew it. Or so he thought. See, we have to understand that God's vision for us can be sometimes different than what our vision for us is going to be of the future that God has planned for us. And so he'll do these course corrections to head us down a different path if necessary. Sometimes we go willingly and sometimes not so much. Personally, I can I can vouch for that because sometimes I I, I went along kicking and screaming until I really finally understood the picture and then I went, okay, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Kind of like writing this sermon. So Coach John was so wrapped up, so focused on what he wanted, he lost sight of what God wanted. He lost sight of what God wanted. What we need to understand and what really hit me hard is God's sight is always 20-20 and ours is sometimes myopic short-sighted. So when he saw his victory being defeated, he plunged headfirst into the pity party pool. And he was all set to drown. But, see, God, God put this wonderful woman in his life that was not going to let that happen. So, it happens to be one of my favorite parts of the movie. So she goes over and she grabs this stool. She's about 15 feet away. She comes over, sits down on the stool, and she gets up, she moves it closer, she moves it closer, she moves it closer until they're right in front of each other. So the only thing he could focus on was her. Not all the rest of the stuff, not the junk that he was focused on, not the pity party. Now he invited her into the pity party, but guess what? She didn't come in. He said, hey, the pool, the water's fine, come on in. She goes, nope, 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 nope. And so she did a, uh, in a loving way, did a course correction on it. Kind of one of those smack upsides the head. Literally changed his focus and then drained the pool and snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Little sports metaphor. So he made a choice. He hit his knees and he got his state title in the end, but not in basketball. Not in basketball. He found out there was more to life than just the game. So what am I saying here? We can either let our circumstances dictate our future, or we can use those circumstances to define our future. And again, it's a choice that we have to God chose the coach to set Hannah on a different path that changed her life. And he chose John's wife to come in and change the path that John was on. And ultimately, everyone got what they wanted. When they stopped and listened to God's directions in the face of the issues that they were facing, the difficulties, the challenges. Okay, so I'll read you back this time. So let's take a look at some of the scriptures that we have and see what they say about facing difficulties in our life. And we're going to jump first to 1 Peter 1, 6. 
You rejoice in this, even though now for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief in various trials. Now, our human nature finds this to be counterintuitive, to rejoice in the midst of a hard time. We have a hard time wrapping our mind around rejoicing when we're facing a bad time. There was a saying years ago that, you know, it's really, really hard when your initial directive was to drain the swamp and you're up to your hips and alligators. It's really hard to focus on what your initial objective was. It really is. And I cleaned it up because it's an old military saying. I'm sure some of you in here know what I'm talking about. But our humanness finds that counterintuitive. We are not really going to rejoice when we're up to our hips and alligators. You know, we're tending to panic at that point in time, and we typically want to drown in what we're doing to. And if we go further in this in the scripture, see, he sent us some more answers to these questions. So in Romans 5, 3 and 4, it says, not only that, but we also rejoice in our afflictions. Because we know that afflictions produces endurance, endurance produces proven character, and proven character produces hope. When we endure the trials or afflictions, we are assured that in the end we will not be left destitute, but that it would lead us to hope instead. We endure the trials that we have that he puts in our path to give us that course correction. And in the end, it brings us hope when we follow him. In this verse in Matthew, Jesus uses a parable to help us understand how we can withstand the storms of life if we take Jesus into the storm with us. And in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, it says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew, and pounded that house, yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew, and pounded that house, and it collapsed. It collapsed with a great crash. So what's all this mean? Standing strong in our faith in the midst of the storm will see us through the storm. See us through that storm. We have to stand on a strong foundation built in Christ. Notice here it says that the calamity came against both of the houses. Came against both of the houses. One was on a firm foundation. One was firmly rooted in Christ. The other was not. One crashed. The other one stood still through the same storm. Jesus told his disciples to be prepared. He said, you will have suffering in this world, but be courageous. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. And in this life, we'll face all the kinds of difficulties. The challenges we have have the potential to crumble our faith or the power to shape who we are in Christ. And it becomes down to a matter of choice. Your choice. We were chosen to have a loving, lasting relationship with Jesus. To bring us out of our sinful existence and back into a relationship with our Father in Heaven. Just like He did with Hannah. For Hannah, it was a turning point in her life. She was a loner, separated from her peers. She felt rejected and abandoned and isolated. But when God sent the people into her life, she came into a relationship, a loving relationship, and she found a new life in Christ. She's now living a fulfilled life and using her new life to help others in crisis. She is sharing the word of Christ and the hope of tomorrow with others and fulfilling that great commission. You and I are also chosen to have that same relationship and a fulfilled life. When Jesus was ending his ministry on earth, he told the people and the disciples that they had two things to do after he was gone. And when we had Orange Track Racing, I mentioned this exact thing. I talked about this in our devotion time. 
Number one, he told us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And number two, to go into all the world, make disciples of all nations. And we call this the Great Commission. And it's to spread the good news of Christ to others. In the end, when we do this, it brings hope, joy, love, grace, and mercy to a very broken world. We only have two things that Jesus gave us to do. Two things on our list. Love our neighbors as ourselves and go into all the world and make disciples. Let us pray. Lord of unfailing love, in the midst of our storms, you are good and faithful, overflowing with steadfast love. Our world is in crisis, Lord, we need you to change our hearts. Help us to restore trust and redeem relationships. Help us to overcome what the world throws at us. Let us help others to overcome their difficulties as well. We alone are not capable of bringing communities back together, but nothing is impossible for you, God. Grant us the wisdom and help us to show them the gift of restoration for families, for communities, for races, for broken lives. Where someone needs to forgive, give them the strength to forgive. Where someone needs to admit fault, give them the humility Embolden us today to reach out. Empower us to provide help. And equip us today to be your hands and feet to bring your message to our broken world. Thank you, Jesus, for your power, for your grace, for your mercy. shows us why this meal and why we celebrate it are so important. Why we need to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. In the scriptures in Matthew 26 it says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and he blessed it. And then he broke it into pieces and he gave it to his disciples saying, this, or take this and eat it, for this is And he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks for it to God. And he gave it to them and he said, Each of you, drink from it. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Elsewhere in scripture, it tells us for as often as we do this, we are to do so until Christ returns. Because he is not going to partake of this meal again until he returns and we will be ready. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Heavenly Father, we come before you in humility. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for giving us a softened heart so that we can know you. We ask that you would not only check our hearts, but that you would guard them. Show us the things in our lives that we need to change, whether that's pride, unforgiveness, or anything else that is keeping us from growing our relationship with we are your children, having accepted you, Father, having entered into a relationship with your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us, and letting the Holy Spirit guide us in life. 
the bread that we have eaten this morning, the bread that represents the life of Jesus sacrificed on the cross. Thank you, Father. And the cup that represents the blood of Jesus, it comes as a reminder of the ultimate sacrifice that you sent Jesus to pay for our sins. Not just past, but present and future. Father, you gave Jesus victory over sin, and by being in a relationship with you, Father, we understand that we are given that same victory. He took the punishment for us. We are chosen. We are redeemed. Thank you, Father, for this victory. Let us be reminded daily of the precious gift of life that you have given each of us here and into eternity. In Jesus' precious and holy name. sightings and um, does anybody have anything they'd like to say before I take over? And so Our um, nephew's daughter uh, she's three months old as of I think it was yesterday wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, she is in the hospital they don't know what's wrong her head is not growing like it should and she's not oh. able to keep food down or eat as she should oh, and goodness. so they are mm. desperately seeking answers Yes. And desperately seeking guidance. And what is her name? Anaya. Anaya. And her parents are um, Tasha and Hunter. Tasha and Hunter. Oh, Lord. Well, this week, um, <clears throat> we'll pray for them. And um, I was woken up early this week at 3 o'clock on Tuesday night. I think it was, or Wednesday, I'm not sure. And, and I was just reminded of all the miracles God has done for us through our prayers um, here at this church, our prayers on Wednesday night that we prayed for everyone. And, and um, a lot of people have been healed and a lot of things have happened. And, and God needs to be praised for each and every one of these things. So that's what I'm basing my prayer on this morning. And um, he put Psalms 91, 14, 16 on my heart. He said, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So, Father God, we come to you this morning, praising your holy name. And thanking you for all the miracles you have bestowed upon this church and the people who listen online. And there's no God like you. And there's no God but you. You are God over Israel, God over all. You alone heal our diseases. You alone walk with us through the darkest of nights and protect us. You alone perform great and wondrous miracles on earth and heavens above. There is no place we can go that you are not with us. We thank you, Jesus. We praise your holy name this morning and give you all the glory and honor for each and every blessing you pour out upon us. So Lord, we, come, we humbly come before you this morning and ask for healing for Anaya and her parents. I pray that you will guide the doctors, help them to know what's going on. But, Father, you alone are the healer. You alone can take care of her needs. So, Lord, I pray that you will just wash over her and help her to grow normally, Lord Jesus. Comfort her parents' hearts and keep them steadfast and steady on you. I pray for comfort for Lori's knee and give her strength in each new day. I pray for Mark and Lori as they travel this week. I pray they will have a blessed time together. Mark will um, be safe everywhere he goes and um, to be able to do his work perfectly. I pray for Antonin's health issues, that the doctors can figure out what it is and give him comfort and rest. For Denny's heart issues, 
for surgery that he's had or is going to have to guide the doctor's hands and help him to know that you are with him through this. Comfort them, Father God. For Becky and Ann, for their limbs, please take the pain away, Lord, and give them rest. For Steve and Larry, June and Jamie, for healing. Comfort them with your loving arm, oh God. Help us all to know that you alone are God. And for Terry, for his shoulders, I pray that you will heal them, Lord God, and give him strength each and every day. And for all who are online in need of healing, I pray that you will be with them. And you will listen to them, Lord God, and they will be overcomers in Jesus' name. Because by your stripes we are healed. And I pray for a friend's son to find a good job. Aunt Austin, to find him a job that will be pleasing to you, O Father God. For you are God who sees, and you know our deepest fears, our worries. We give them over to you today, Lord Jesus. Dwell in your, let us dwell in your peace that passes all understanding. For your love endures forever. In Jesus' holy name, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and let every breath, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 This ends our online portion of our service today. We've picked out some really great music, and hopefully you can click on the playlist and, and check those out as well, and uh, receive this blessing as we go forth today. Dear Lord, we, uh, we praise you and thank you that you have chosen us, you have called us by name, and that we are yours. Lord, help us to lean on you and not our own understanding, on our own ways, Lord. Take that separation that we have from you right now, Lord, and just wipe it away. Help us to be your hands and feet to lift others up who are struggling through whatever it happens to be, whether it's loss of loved ones, whether it's health issues, uh, whether it's a loss of a job or a failed marriage, whatever seems to be the issues that they're struggling with today, Lord, we lift them up to you. We ask that you would bless them deeply and richly. And that you would help us, empower us, embolden us to go forth and to lift them up to you. And Lord, we ask that you would just give us your blessings each and every day. Fill us full of your grace, mercy, and love. In your precious and holy name.